seems speechless. Watch Investigate TV. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12, first at 5. Well, bringing you back to Washington, D.C. for breaking news out of the nation's capital. You're looking at former President Trump's motorcade leaving a federal courthouse. Trump will be back in D.C. August 28th for his next court appearance. He pleaded not guilty to all four charges for trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election and for his role in the January 6th Capitol riots. Prosecutors say he had several conspirators. He was fingerprinted today. Now, he did not get his mugshot taken. None of this, by the way, impacts his ability to run for president. He does plan to speak at the airport. We will bring you back here live as soon as he does so we can hear what he has to say. Several students are in custody tonight after a fight at Aiken High School. This all happening at around 1 this afternoon after authorities say a fight broke out in the cafeteria and then spilled outside. Just in the last 30 minutes, we learned there was a knife found in the vicinity of that incident. Police say this knife was not used in the fight. Now, despite rumors, police say that there were no guns or knives involved in the fight and all injuries were minor. That was a previous report. Aiken County Public Safety says six students were arrested and are charged with misdemeanor affray. Police say more charges could follow. And in Burke County, the superintendent sending out a letter to parents today after several fights inside Burke County High School. Now, the superintendent, Angela Williams, says there will now be increased supervision and increased security at Burke County High School. She says the students involved in the fights have been removed from school pending a disciplinary tribunal and criminal charges are being pursued where appropriate. And we do have very active weather across the area today that is going to extend into this evening and tonight. We do have an active severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Wilkes and Tolliver County that will stay in effect until 5.30 p.m. Winds up to 60 miles per hour. Quarter size hail are possible with this storm as well. Still just outside of downtown Washington uh, there in central Wilkes County, but it's moving towards you at about 25 to 35 miles an hour. Next in line is going to be us here across the central CS race. So you can see this line of strong thunderstorms extending across most of uh, north and east central Georgia. So this is going to be heading towards this I-20 corridor right here. Right now we're looking at the timing for us here in Augusta to show up between 6 and 645 and then continue south of the interstate as we head into later this evening. This is going to produce some heavy rain. These winds are definitely uh, going to be picking up as well. So we want to make sure you are staying weather aware for the rest of this evening. We've had our eye on a, a stronger thunderstorm that moved out of Edgefield County. Last couple of can, uh, scans do show that weakening as it does cross over to Aiken County. So good news to report there. We're going to continue the threat for severe weather across most of the western CSRA. Highlighted in pink here, that's a severe thunderstorm watch where conditions are going to be favorable for those severe storms to continue. So places like Jefferson, Glasscock, Warren County, you're including those and those are going to stay in effect at least through sunset tonight. We also have the risk for some flash flooding. So this heavy rain with these storms is going to also produce that threat for maybe some minor flood reports across the area. So here's a look at this line of storms. This is heading towards us here in Augusta. Timing right now once again between 6 and 645 and then it does drop off towards the south and as we head into late tonight early tomorrow rain chances start to go down some. We'll have much more on this coming up in the full forecast but let's get a quick update on your first alert traffic. And now first alert traffic. Well, here's a view outside of our studios. This is looking towards uh, the Savannah River, and this is the storm that we've had our tower cam on that just crossed over the Edgefield County line to Aiken County. Some scud in the sky definitely looks impressive, but luckily well, a weakening storm there, and it looks like traffic moving okay there on I-20 for eastbound and westbound lanes. Going out to Grovetown next, you can see Lewiston Road, exit 190, traffic flow okay right here, and uh, we're dry right now in Grovetown, but these storms are heading our way. Much more on this coming up in the full forecast. All right, thanks for that, Riley. In Richmond County, elementary schoolers have officially begun their school year. The rest of the county follows suit Monday. Our Audrey Dickerber went to Warren Road Elementary and spoke to the Richmond County School Superintendent on their number one priority for this school year. It's the first day back for Richmond County Elementary, and kids and parents were eager to be back and get the school year going. The superintendent says safety is the number one priority this year. 
One new safety initiative this year is an upgrade to the new camera systems at schools. They are also implementing new math standards in order to build a strong foundation beginning in early grades. But despite these new programs, there are still jobs that need to be filled in the district. There's really not um, a deficit in teachers or bus drivers. Yes, it's going to be tight, but we're rallying together to ensure that all classrooms and all routes are covered. I looked online and saw that there were still over 100 job applications still open, ranging from bus drivers to teachers to part-time cafeteria workers. In Augusta, Audrey Dickerber, on your side. All right, in just two days, the focus of the political world will be right here in South Carolina, where former President Donald Trump will make his first visit to an early voting state following his latest indictment. The former president will be speaking at the South Carolina Republican Party's annual Silver Elephant Gala in Columbia. Our state house reporter Mary Green has more on what his top rivals and one of his top allies in South Carolina had to say ahead of that trip. Governor Henry McMaster is one of former President Trump's top supporters here in South Carolina. The governor was also, at one point, the state's top federal prosecutor and says he believes this latest indictment is insubstantial. Reading about it and reading those portions that I have, I just do not see the substance. I don't think the law fits it. I don't think the facts fit, fit it. And it's, this is just a, this is a campaign against... Donald Trump. McMaster told reporters he believes special counsel Jack Smith, who is leading the federal government's prosecution, is out of line with these four new charges. They accuse Trump of working to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. Hours before Trump's arraignment Thursday in federal court in Washington, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis spoke virtually with South Carolina reporters. DeSantis has been critical of the investigations leading to Trump's indictments, but he says this election should be a referendum on what he characterizes as the failures of the Biden administration. If the election becomes about the past, if it becomes about what happened three or four years ago, five or six years ago, if it's about, you know, this document or that document, well, Biden's going to be able to be in the basement again, to be able to fly under the radar. Uh, and I think he's going to be able to get away with it again. And we're going to end up uh, saying, you know, what happened? How come, you know, we can't win these elections? In a tweet, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott says he's concerned about, quote, the weaponization of Biden's Department of Justice and its immense power use against political opponents. In recent months, Trump has held steady in topping the polls of likely Republican voters here in South Carolina, with DeSantis, Scott, and former Governor Nikki Haley all jockeying for position behind him ahead of the rest of the field. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. Now, we reached out to Nikki Haley's campaign for comment on Trump's latest indictment and how it could impact the race, but have not heard back. Donald Trump just spoke at the airport in Washington, D.C., he spoke just very briefly. We will have what he said in just a few minutes. His family says he was eaten alive by bedbugs in a Fulton County jail cell. LaShawn Thompson died last September following a misdemeanor battery charge. But his family says conditions at the jail were so bad it turned into a death sentence. Now Thompson's family will get $4 million from Fulton County after county commissioners unanimously voted to settle their lawsuit. Mediated settlement. All parties came together, discussed, looked at the facts and uh, life expectancy and things of that nature that go into such a decision. And then the final analysis, uh, we agreed upon a $4 million settlement on behalf of Fulton County. Commissioners also approved a new jail to be built with a price tag of more than $1.5 billion. The Department of Justice is investigating the Fulton County Jail. The county's chief jailer and two assistant jailers resigned in the aftermath of his death. Helping raise the next generation by being there for them through anything life throws their way. Just ahead, how one program is making sure no teenager is left behind. And we are tracking severe storms moving into the northern CSRA, heading towards us here in Augusta next. Update on the forecast just after break. New crime data from the Richmond County Sheriff's Office shows an increase in shootings every summer over the last four years. Coming up all new tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we dive deeper into how this trend is impacting the community. Thanks for watching News 12 on your side.
Your job counts on to take care of you? Call the one attorney you can count on to get you everything you're entitled to. Attorney John Foy and Associates. Welcome back, folks. Here's a look at our current watches and warnings across the area. So we do have an active severe thunderstorm warning in effect for all of Wilkes and portions of Tolliver County. That stays in effect until 530. And then a severe thunderstorm watch has just been placed for many of the western CS or uh, for most of the western CS or eight. That stays in effect until 9 p.m. So we are looking at some pretty strong storms moving in from the northwest. This is a look at that severe thunderstorm warning in effect for uh, Wilkes and Tolliver and definitely a lot of lightning with this. Uh, some torrential rainfall and most likely seeing those winds gusting between 50 50 to 60 just ahead of this line. So get ready, downtown Washington. The storm's heading towards you uh, within the next 15 minutes. For us here in Evans, Augusta, our time frame is going to be about an hour later from Wilkes County. So it'll time out between, say, 6 and 6.45. That's when we're expecting it to be closer towards this I-20 corridor. Uh, but watch out for this storm in downtown Washington all the way to Crawfordville, Siloam, and even portions of Clarksville Lake. You're about to see a portion of this line. It's just not as severe for Lincoln and McCormick County. But this line extends all the way to Metro Atlanta and all the way actually into Birmingham, uh, Alabama. So this is just a long line of strong storms dropping south and east towards the coastline. Here's a live view outside of our Beach Island camera. This is actually a more discreet cell in Aiken County that's actually been rotating a little bit, uh, but luckily has not produced any damage with it and it is weakening over the last couple of scans. With all the cloud cover today, that's kept our temperatures in the 80s for the most part, so we haven't really warmed up too much. But take a look at our rain chances. So this line is just going to continue moving towards us here in Augusta, so rain chances increasing into this evening and tonight. For your Friday, we're not expecting a washout, but just can't rule out maybe a spotty shower storm really at any point during the day, including tomorrow morning. So heading out to the bus stop uh, for all the kiddos back in school Friday morning, you may just want to have that rain jacket uh, in your backpack just in case. Here's a look at this line of storms dropping south through us. So once again, for us here in Augusta, most likely seeing the worst of the rain and wind between 6 and 645. Then it's dropping south of us as we get closer to sunset. And then once again for our Friday, not looking like a washout, just a chance maybe for a spotty shower storm in the morning and afternoon. Then as we head to Saturday night, we're actually expecting some heavy rain. So this is 2.30 a.m. Saturday. So this is uh, after we go to bed Friday night before we wake up Saturday morning. And then as that moves off towards the coastline, we should enjoy a fairly nice Saturday. So not looking too bad out there for us. Uh, but the flash flooding risk, that's going to be a, a concern with this line of storms moving through this evening and tonight. Those areas that are included in the severe thunderstorm watch are actually underneath a slight flood risk. So flood prone areas definitely be on the lookout for some minor impacts. Good news is the latest update that just came in from the Weather Prediction Center did drop our flood risk Friday. So no longer expecting a significant weather uh, throughout the day tomorrow. But the high impact weather that's going to be found over the next several hours this evening and early tonight in some of our western counties potentially could get over two inches of rainfall. So definitely enough to cause some flooding problems. So if you live well west of Augusta, just make sure you're on alert if you do live in a flood prone area. Here's a look at that seven day forecast. So for the weekend, we do warm back up low to mid 90s, more humidity, but just a chance for a few hit and miss storms each afternoon through the weekend. Thanks, Riley. The future starts now. In Georgia, a group called Essential to Life is focusing on raising Atlanta's youth and making sure nobody is left behind. And mentoring like this is more than being just around for a challenge or two. It's about being consistent, persistent, and showing up when you don't have to. Sawyer Bussey has more. I was adopted by my aunt uh, because my mom and dad are both incarcerated. And they were incarcerated throughout like most of my childhood. The staff at Essential to Life believes mentoring can alter the course of someone's life. And who knows what kind of person that someone might be. Essential well, to Life is a youth leadership program here in Atlanta. And our goal is to help students at Title I high schools first get out of high school and then secondly get into college or a career with little or no debt. The organization wraps its arms around kids and helps them navigate life before and after high school. The 15 program covers everything from life skills to career planning. According to the organization, students who go through the program have a 100% high school graduation rate, with 89% going to college and 6% going to the military. Dre Jones started the program at 15. Now, he's an intern. So it's like, even though you're, you have certain circumstances, you know, you don't have to allow that to stop you from having anything that anyone else has. Sometimes the words that mean the most to us are the words that were seldom said to us as kids. 
As adults, they become beacons, reminders that we can always create the lives we're dreaming of. Something that they always say is like, if you need anything, let me know. And I feel like they just, it means a lot to me, even though I will probably never ask for anything, but like just knowing, because like no one really says that to me, but they'll say it and they really mean it. How great is this? Dre is now a junior at Georgia State studying audio engineering, and no doubt he will go far. A new Alzheimer's drug giving hope to millions of Americans. Just ahead, one couple's battle with the disease and what this medication means for them. Coming up. Specialist for your free estimate. Yes, can fix it. In the last month, a breakthrough Alzheimer's drug was fully approved by the FDA and Medicare. It's bringing hope to the millions of Americans who are living with the disease. Tyler Mannion introduces us to one couple who are considering using this new drug when it becomes available to give them more time with one another. Inside this tilted head home, the most important currency is time. There's a clock at every turn. Keeping track of each second that's become more important than ever since a diagnosis three years ago. If we could just press pause like on a cassette tape and my wife was at the level of ability she has now for the rest of her life, I would be thrilled to death. At the age of 57, his wife Claudia is fighting early onset Alzheimer's every second of every day. She's working to keep her brain sharp with puzzles like this. Let's go together. While a ruthless disease attacks it from within, taking a toll on her emotions and abilities. All of a sudden, I just can't find words. Each step forward is Claudia fighting, keeping her body as healthy as it can be. But there's only so much families like the Walls can do beyond medicine. That's why the recent FDA and Medicare approval of Lakembi is crucial. This is the first, what we hope will be many, Alzheimer's drugs that can change the progression of the disease and actually slow it down. The Walls have tried and are trying a number of treatments, including infusions like Lakembi would be. They say the feelings that come with drug developments are about as complex as the medications themselves. Uh, on my end, there was an excitement. I think on, on my wife's end, there was some excitement, but you're... You're remembering, hey, the last treatment I had swelling on the brain, and then obviously the possibility of a brain bleeds. The initial cost looks to be twenty to thirty thousand a year, but maybe ten to fifteen percent of that would be our cost after Medicare. They say that brings this treatment closer to reality, and importantly, could bring more time to their family. This drug approved by the FDA helps control Alzheimer's disease, but does not cure it. Continuing coverage on the breaking news out of Washington, D.C., former President Donald Trump speaking just moments ago, very briefly, though, after pleading not guilty to four charges. Now, those charges are for trying to overturn the 2020 election and for his role in the January 6th Capitol riots. Now, here's what Trump said when he got to the airport following today's court appearance. Well, thank you very much. This is a very sad day for America, and it was also very sad driving through Washington, D.C., and seeing the filth and the decay and all of the broken buildings and walls and the graffiti. This is not the place that I left. It's a very sad thing to see it. Uh, when you look at what's happening, this is a persecution of a political opponent. This was never supposed to happen in America. This is the persecution of the person that's leading by very, very substantial numbers in the Republican primary and leading Biden by a lot. So if you can't beat him, you persecute him or you prosecute him. We can't let this happen in America. Thank you very much. Former president will be back in D.C. on August 28th for his next court appearance in this case. He's been arrested three times in the last four months. Again, he pleaded not guilty to all charges this afternoon. Riley. 
Well, it's Thursday, so we have another winner for our Plunkett Heating and Air Sunshade Giveaway. Congratulations to Nakia Walden from Augusta, Georgia. To get your own sunshade, just go to wrdw.com slash contest and, and enter your email right there. Now look at the radar after the break. We are tracking severe storms, so stick with us. Ram Jack Foundation Repair. Well, here's a look at our first alert radar network. We are looking at the 1226 on your side right here. There we go. We are looking at a radar network. Some very heavy rain now over Tignall, Washington, Rail, Central Wilkes County. You're likely seeing the worst of the wind from this storm. This is also crossing portions of the Clarksville Lake between Lincoln and McCormick County. That portion of the line just not quite up to severe levels. So this is where we're thinking the strongest winds are. So if you're in Washington, just make sure you're staying inside away from windows. You're likely hearing a good uh, bit of thunder out there as well as lightning continues to be a problem with this line. This is dropping south and east at about 25 to 35 miles an hour, so time to have to reach us here in Augusta between 6 and 7 o'clock. That's kind of the rough time frame to where it's going to show up for us here locally. Uh, but if you are anywhere up towards the northern and western CS array, this is the strongest part of the line. That's going to be dropping through the western CS array through this evening into tonight. So make sure you are staying weather aware. Have our first alert weather app downloaded. You'll get those automatic weather alerts. And just make sure you are keeping an eye to the sky because these storms are definitely producing some strong winds. Take a look at our seven-day forecast. We're going to stay uh, just a chance for a few storms tomorrow and then the weekend. Much more seasonal with those highs back in the 90s. Stick with us. We're going to have much more weather coverage and breaking news just after the break.